So it's the start of a brand new year and you're already thinking about your spring garden. You wanna get some plants started early, but it's a little too cold or maybe a little too wet. So you're thinking about indoor seed starting and that means grow lights and they're confusing. They're expensive. Do I use LED or something else? They're not expensive. They're not confusing. I can make this very simple for you and I'm gonna shed some light on grow lights. All right, let's go. So it's kind of a dense, foggy, nasty kind of day. Um, it's raining too. So we're gonna take it to the barn. See if we can get something done. All right, so let's talk about grow lights. Here's the thing, it's not that complicated. Most people, when they think of starting seeds indoors, they think, man, this is just gonna be really, really hard and lights are so expensive. They don't have to be that expensive. In fact, you can probably make one four foot long that will start your seedlings and even grow your plants for a while um, for probably less than 40, 45 bucks. Um, and that's with extra lights. So I'm gonna go through some steps here today of what the major requirements are for lights. Um, what lumens are, what the uh, Kelvin scale is, and why it's important, and what we need to focus on to get our plants to grow in a good and healthy way and do it as inexpensively and easy as possible. So if that sounds good to you, let's get our hands dirty. So as you can see, it's kind of a dreary, foggy, rainy kind of day, so we're in the barn. The lighting is not great, so I apologize for that. I do have my microphone working again, which is good. Uh, it's not always great, but it is what it is. Let's talk about grow lights. Uh, I learned a long, long time ago, there was a, um, a Texas A&M grad student in the agricultural department that wrote a very small article, and I wish I could find the original article, I can't now, um, explaining how normal shop lights can work just as effectively as these very expensive grow lights. Now, what I'm talking about here in the setup I'm going to show you costs about $30 to $40, or maybe up to $45, depending on the lights you buy uh, and the housing you buy. But what he determined was, was that as long as you had the lumens right, as long as you had the Kelvins right on the light, they would work just fine. Distance also plays a factor. So let's talk about lumens. So what is a lumen? A lumen is essentially the amount of light that a light will put out. Now, you'll see everything in the range from 150 lumens, which might replicate a kind of indoor bulb, all the way up to the tens of thousands, depending on the kind of light you buy. What we're looking for here is about 5,000 lumens or more. Now, let's explain how lumens work and why it's important. If you think of uh, the lumens in a light as a shotgun shell, okay, so you've got the shell, you've got the little pellets inside. Those pellets are the lumens. If I stand back with this shotgun and I shoot at a paper target, say 20 or 30 feet away, and pull the trigger, and there's 100 pellets in that shotgun shell, maybe 30 of them will hit the paper and pierce through the target. But if I move that shotgun within inches of the paper target and I fire it, all the pellets will go through it. Those pellets are what determine how a shop light works when it comes to lumens. So, if you think about your plants, we have all these lumens coming down. We don't want them really far away. We don't want them really close. The lumens, if they're in the 5,000 range, and these here, these are in the 2,900 range. And remember, I said we want to have at least 5,000. If 5,000 lumens, that's our base optimal point. We have to keep the plant close to the light. Remember, like the shotgun target. I have two of these in there. So essentially, we're just under uh, 6,000 lumens. Now, the lumens are responsible for starting the photosynthesis in the plant. So we have to make sure our lights aren't too far away for the amount of lumens we have. And we want to make sure that we have enough lumens that we're causing the photosynthesis to get kick-started in the plant. So, in our case, we want to make sure that our lights stay within about six or seven inches of the plant itself. They usually say two to three inches above the, um, the first foliage is kind of the uh, base standard. So, that's lumens. Now, the second most important thing that we have when we have to deal with grow lights is the Kelvin scale. All that really is, is the color of light. It's a frequency of light. In this case, when we're starting seedlings, we wanna start around 5,000 K and up. So 5,000 Kelvin and up. Now, there's other spectrums of lights that are also important to growing if that's what you're looking to do. So let's think of it like this. Let's think of the different stages of a plant's life. First of all, in our case, like we're seeding them out, we want them to start growing. They're gonna produce some roots and then those first few seedling leaves and then they'll produce their first pair of real leaves. Now, if you think about that stage, of the plant, 
that's a certain sector of its life. The next sector is when you have the foliage is established, the adult plant or semi-adult plant is grown, it's now wanting to put on flowers so it can produce fruit. It's a different stage in its life. Well, Kelvin affects those two stages differently. In the first stage, where we're growing the foliage, when we're starting seeds, we want that range to stay in the cool light range. Now, what does that mean? The cool light range. That means somewhere from 5,000 Kelvin or 5,000 K and up. That 5,000 K range will allow the light to really, really, really put a lot of work into the foliage of the plant. Remember, like we said with lumens, that starts the photosynthesis. The color of the light, the spectrum of the light, the Kelvin of the light tells uh, the plant it's time to produce more leaves. Now, there's the other end of the spectrum as well, which is the warm range of Kelvin. Now, that's usually between 3,000 and say 4,500 Kelvin. What is that good for? Well, the second stage of life. As the plant begins to grow, it's now done putting on its leaves and everything else. It wants to put out flowers. It needs that warm range of light, which is that 3,000 to 4,500 uh, Kelvin range. That stage of life requires more red white. Now, you want to buy full spectrum lights. That's the big deal. But it's important to know that when we're starting seeds, which is what I'm going to be doing with these right now, I don't ever grow inside really. Um, I want something above the 5,000 Kelvin range. Now, these lights are about 6,500 Kelvin and I've got two of them. They're about 3,000 lumens each and I'll have two of those. So we're at 6,000 lumens. They're perfect for starting seeds. Okay, so now that you understand lumens and you understand Kelvin and what we're looking for, remember something above 5,000 lumens and something that is in the say 5,000 and up range range for Kelvin. So remember 5,000, 5,000. It's really simple. If we want to grow lights, think of a tomato. The fruit's red, so we want a warmer light. And the leaves are not bright, warm colors. They're cool colors, so we want a cool light. So above 5,000, below 4,500. Okay, so now that you have a basic understanding of the lumens in a light and the Kelvin in the light and what our requirements are, now you can go and get your grow light, right? Now you can take a look on Amazon or any of the nurseries around you or even the nurseries online and you'll find that they're very expensive, both the fixtures and the lights. Now, are they better than the light that I'm making here today? No, they're not. One thing they will do is they will last longer. And what I mean by longer is the bulbs. There's a d lifetime of bulb where those lumens start to decrease, the spectrum of the light starts to come down the Kelvin, and they're not quite as effective. So if you have two, they'll probably last twice as long. In my case, I'm going to add two. Um, but really every six months to a year, you should change your grow light. Now most of the incandescent or fluorescent grow lights that you buy will tell you they're only good for about a year anyway. So really, there's no difference there. Now LEDs, LEDs are different. They do last longer. However, I have grown with LEDs and I do not like them. Number one, they don't produce any heat. And for me, when I'm using a grow light, I usually need some warmth around my plants. Um, they're just not as good and they're way, way expensive. So this thing is not going to be expensive at all. Now, like I said, here's the shop light. This is a 48 inch or four foot, 120 volt T12 shop light. It holds two bulbs. I will be using just one spectrum of light, and that's the Kelvin rate that I showed you, 6500. Now, you can add different wavelength spectrums to a single light. In my case, later on, if I wanted to um, grow things a little bit different, which I will do, but I don't need it for seed starting, you can put one light as a cool light, which is our 6500 light, or 5000 and above Kelvin, and you can put one as a warm light, which is our below 4,500, which I have a 3,800 in the other housing of that light. Now what that does is it gives you both sides. Now in my case, I usually buy a, a less powerful warm spectrum light so that it doesn't really get the plant trying to produce flowers yet. You don't want them to get in your pots and grow with really strong roots and really short stem and have all kinds of problems with putting out flowers. Now, we've talked a little bit about the distance and spacing, but that's the next most important thing, is you have to make sure your lights stay a good distance away from the plants. We're gonna make sure within six to seven inches when we place these plants in there, and as they grow, we wanna keep them about two to eight inches above the plants in a 5,000 lumen range. Now, if you go up to say 10,000 lumens, you can keep them 12, 13, maybe even 14 inches from the plant. If you go 30,000 lumens or better, you could be five, six, seven feet from the plant. So it really all depends on what you're doing, the number of lights you have, the space you have to work in. This is a very simple lighting system just to start the seeds we need indoors in an enclosed space in this barn actually, and uh, get them growing, get them ready for the planting season. So in our case, a single shop light will work fine, but it's really simple to add another one. And these things will last. The bulbs are fairly inexpensive. Just make sure you buy new ones. And sometimes it's hard, but you do need to find out what the lumens and the Kelvin scale is on those lights. So now you've got your lights. 
But you need a way to hang them, right? Most of them come with chains. Make sure you get some of those if they don't aren't included with your, uh, your light housing. But you'll want to put them over your plants. Now, for me, I'm going to build something that I can move around a little bit. I could hang it from the ceiling, which is very simple. You could build a simple board structure if you have the boards. But I find that a PVC stand works very, very easily and I always have some on hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, this PVC stand that I put together. And uh, basically the shape of it, it really is up to you. You don't have to follow this. There's no exact measurements. Just make sure it works for your application. The big deal is you want to be able to raise and lower your light down to your plant. If it's something you want to see more of and see how I built it, we'll certainly show you that. But for now, I'll just show you the finished products. So I'm going to get after it and you'll see how it looks. All right, guys, that's it. That's how simple grow lights are. You can get these things really inexpensively. Like I said, I used Lowe's. You can go down in the comments. I'll give you the links. I'm not affiliated with them yet because their process is really complicated, but they do have a good product and it's fairly inexpensive. Amazon tends to be more overpriced than your local big box store and most of them can ship them to you for free. That includes Walmart. So links are down there below. If you like this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up and share it around. There might be somebody you know that's been struggling with this or has been asking questions or been talking about grow lights and they might need a way to figure out something cheaper. Share it with them. It really helps me. And don't forget, if you aren't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe. Guys, I want to leave you like I always do. There's only four things in life that you need to have a happy and well-balanced life. The first thing is you need to believe in something. Second, you need to have someone to love. Third, you need something to do. And fourth, you need something to look forward to. Gardening, little shop things like this on a dark and dreary day, that can fill that last void, guys. It'll keep you happy, I promise. It was great to see you, and I can't wait to see you next time. All right, guys, we'll see you. Doc out. Weird, wet, and very foggy day.